Hey guys, it's Dell. We're back with Jet Set Radio. So now we're gonna be taking on the Jet Techniques. So what we do in the Jet Techniques is just basically skate around the place. In this case, Shibuya Cho, do tricks and whatnot. And you have some arrows to spray. They're optional because they're all green. And the bus terminal is probably the perfect place to rack up on a lot of points right here. You can grind around here and... Yeah, there's some, like I said, there's green arrows that... I'm gonna be spraying all those, so... Make it, I wanna get lots of points. And I think I'm gonna go around getting all, spraying all the green arrows. Yeah, I definitely would like to go for a jet rank for everything. That's what I'm going for. A jet rank for everything. And yeah, there's really not much else to say. I mean, in my Jet Set Radio Future playthrough, during the Jet Text, I just, you know, talk about some stuff. What's going on in life, or whatever it is I might want to talk about. And you know, I think I'll go ahead and do that here too. And yeah, because we're going to be here for a while. So, let's go ahead and talk about how things are going. So... Uh, Jet Set Radio's 20th anniversary. I celebrated it. I did a 8-bit cover of the Concept of Love from Jet Set Radio Future. That was a great one to do. I had fun covering that. Those samples. I had the most fun with those. They're fun to take around with. And I also dressed up as Beat. I have a Beat shirt. I also have Beat glasses. I definitely did dress up as Beat for Jet Set Radio's 20th anniversary. I also do have a costume of Beat from Jet Set Radio Future. And when I go to anime conventions, I would cosplay as Beat from Jet Set Radio Future. In fact, back in February this year, there was a thing at this gaming place. It's in my town. Um, they were hosting some sort of like masquerade for cosplayers. And the top three winners would get a prize. I cosplayed as Beat from Jet Set Radio Future, and I got second place. And my prize was a gift card to Hot Topic, which was pretty cool. Because I love Hot Topic. I've been there since, like, around the mid to late 2000s. I, would, I was going there a lot. It's a pretty fun store. So, I guess we could talk about this lame year, sadly. It's very, very lame. Um, 2020 has just been a dumpster fire of a year. And it's all because of the stupid coronavirus. Yeah. The coronavirus has pretty much turned the whole world into a pandemic, pretty much. Yeah, it got so bad. Like, just the coronavirus just spreading all over the whole world it was so awful. And, you know, people back then thought that 2016 was as worse as it, as it gets. And <laughs> they were dead wrong now. I mean, personally, I didn't have any bad experiences in 2016. I mean, for everyone else, probably, yeah, there were some bad things, like... The Zika virus, which was nothing compared to the coronavirus, but still, it was pretty bad. Um, like, pretty much every celebrity in the world died. Now, I'm obviously over-exaggerating when I say everybody. Just a lot of them did. Every year has their fair share of celebrity deaths. But yeah, 2016 did have a disproportionately larger number of them. It was crazy. I remember, like, the last week of 2016, like, every day there was, like, a celebrity that would die. Also, uh, well, I'm just gonna say this real quick. The election between Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton, you had to vote for the lesser evil, and that's all I'm gonna say! Because I don't think I want to go too deeper into politics or anything. Same with religion. I think we shouldn't really discuss these things. So, I'm going to end that right there, but we all know how bad that was. Because nobody wanted those for president. So anyway, uh, we go to 2020. Yeah, it's just been 
such an awful year. I mean, as bad as 2016 was for a lot of people, at least 2016 you got to, you know, do some fun things outdoors, and, you know, it wasn't like 2020 where everything's locked down because of the coronavirus. I mean, yeah, we had the Zika virus, but I don't remember the whole world shutting down. Now, if you want my personal worst year, it's between 2011 and 2012. I hated those years so much. I will probably get into that later on. I'm going to discuss my story through the quarantine so far. I might tackle back on 2011, things that happened that year. I know years are not gods or anything, but man, I hate this year so much. Everybody does. Nobody's, no one likes 2020. <sighs> and, you know, people thought, oh, we can make 2020 vision jokes, but it doesn't look like we can, because it doesn't look like this year's doing so bright. So I guess we could talk about the quarantine, my quarantine experiences, anyway. So yeah, pretty much a lot of places shut down. Schools and colleges went online. Maybe some jobs as well. I'm pretty sure they did. Yeah, they did. Um, now, you might be thinking, Oh, well, everything's locked down, so on the bright side, you can stay at home and do all your fun things. You can play video games all day. You can watch TV all day, movies. Do all your hobbies and whatnot. Just sit at home and do nothing but your fun hobbies. It sounds great at first, but I don't know. Later on, I would like to do other things. I love playing video games. I love watching anime. I re like to read manga, and I make music. I play guitar and, p and piano, but I'd like to do things outside the house, too. Now, we could walk around our neighborhood, at least. And yeah, I've been doing that. I've been playing Pokemon Go. Yeah, I still play Pokemon Go. I mean, admittedly, I did fall out of it around, like, 2017, but then when they announced Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee, and that you can use your Pokemon from Pokemon Go into that game, I was like, I gotta play this again, and I pretty much got myself hooked into Pokemon Go again, and I still like to play it. But anyway... That, so, yeah, the quarantine is basically just, you know, sitting home... Not doing much other than our fun hobbies. <laughs> yeah, I think it started around March. It started from March. It started on March for me. Around the middle of March. Yeah, I remember the coronavirus just spreading like wildfires all around the globe. And it was not good. So, during the quarantine, I played through Mother 3 and finally beat it. So I beat the entire Mother series. I beat for I beat Mother 1 twice. Yes, I actually did beat Mother 1 twice. And I started with Mother 1 before I even played the other two. Well, okay, I did play the other two as well. I actually did start with Mother 3 and then Earthbound and then Mother 1. Like I only played like bits and pieces of Mother 3 at first. Like, I played, like, the, the prologue, and that's it. And then I went to Earthbound. I played, like, more into that. I got to, like, Paula. And then I went to Mother 1, and I decided to just play through that first. Knocked that out of the way. I actually first beat it back way long a time ago. Then, you know, a la not last year, two years ago, 2018, I was getting more and more interested in RPGs. I decided to play through Mother 1 again. And, uh... Yeah, it's that one game that no one really seems to care for. It's like, it's all about Earthbound or Mother 3. Never Mother 1. Slash Earthbound 0. Slash Earthbound Beginnings, whatever you want to call it. Yeah, nobody seems to care too much about Mother 1. But yes, admittedly, it does have those old-school RPG mechanics. And then there was Mount Etoy, which was not even tested. They were lucky that it was, like, manageable. But boy, it was tough. Lots of high-level enemies in there. But yeah, I beat all, the, all three Mother games. It was great. And I finished the Jet Technique in Shibuya Cho and got a Jet Ranking. Now we go on to Kogane Cho and do the, 
the, the jet techniques there. And I'm going to be playing as Mew. I'll be playing as Beat, and then Mew, and then so on. Those two characters. And Mischievous Boy is playing again. Yeah. I mean, I don't mind. Like, well, usually I would, like, probably be like, I'm going to go back to the garage and switch the song. But because we're playing it as Mew, and this is pretty much Mew's theme, I'm going to keep it. So, I guess, uh, back to my, my quarantine story. Uh, so I, I was talking about how I beat Mother 1 twice, and then I, when I went to Earthbound, beat that. I beat that both my playthrough, and then I also was playing it on my, my new 3DS, XL. That, that one was, like, for fun, really. And then, uh, after that, I, you know, played through Mother 3, and I finally beat it. Finally checked that off the to-do list in life. Finally beat Mother 3. And then, uh... I got Persona 5 Royal for PS4. That was great. Great game. Uh, my birthday was on April 28th, which is, you know, during the quarantine. So, uh... Yeah, I had to be indoors, and... I had to do takeout instead of go to my favorite restaurant. It's a Japanese restaurant. It's a teppanyaki style restaurant where they cook in front of you, like on the table. I love those restaurants, but unfortunately that couldn't happen this year because places are locked down because of the coronavirus. So we, the, at least they were able to do takeout. So we did takeout, got chicken teriyaki with white rice, the vegetables. And sushi. Sushi, I love sushi. Especially, uh, California rolls. Those are my favorite. Also like salmon rolls. I'd like to try a spicy tuna roll. Maybe even a dragon roll. Or spider roll. Anyway. Uh. So I did my birthday, and I also got Final Fantasy VII Remake for PS4. Also a great game. And there was a movie that I saw around April. Um, I saw it because of the coronavirus that was going on. And that movie was Osmosis Jones. You might remember Osmosis Jones. You probably saw it in science class. I did, back in 8th grade. Although I actually did see it before I saw it in school. I saw it on TV. And then before that I saw the animated series Ozzy and Drix. Yeah, most people saw the movie at school, but never in theaters. In theaters, it bombed in the box office. It only sold, like, $14 million. Yeah. It was a very low-grossing movie. <laughs> and then, then, then school happened, you know. We got to see it in school. So, yeah, and then, ever since then, it's, like, a lot of people seem to like the movie because they saw it in school and it started to trend because of the coronavirus. I like to think of Osmosis Jones as the Earthbound of movies. Remember how Earthbound came out and nobody got it? And then Super Smash Brothers happened and now everyone loves Earthbound. Same with Osmosis Jones. First came out in theaters, nobody saw it. And then school happened, people saw it and people were like, oh, this is a great movie. Yeah, I thought it was a pretty good movie. All my friends do as well. And then, you know, there was... I, I honestly think Inside Out was inspired by it. Inside Out is pretty much like Osmosis Jones, but instead of health, it's emotions that they focus on. I like that movie as well. But speaking of Osmosis Jones, there is an anime I would like to see called Cells at Work. I've heard a lot about it. I've not seen it yet, but I would like to see it. Especially around this event that we're going through. Man, I really wish I didn't have to go through this, but... Yeah, we have to do it, unfortunately. And then, we go to May of 2020. You know, I, if it weren't for the coronavirus, I would have had a great time in May. April and May are my fun months, usually. I would say always, but... It had to become a usually because of stupid 2020. Um, there was an anime convention called Anime Central. 
I, I've been going to it since 2016. And I always have so much fun there. It's my favorite anime convention of all time. And then the coronavirus had to happen, and it got cancelled. They hosted the panels online, but it's not the same, you know? I wanted to go to it this year. I wanted to do a blog of it, honestly. But no. My plans were all foiled. Everyone's plans were foiled. It's just like, oh, you have plans this year? Okay, take this coronavirus. There you go. Now you can't do what you want to do. Yeah, that's pretty much what happened. <sighs> so, I'm not sure if there's anything else that's worth mentioning in April. I mean, I... I think, you know, things were starting to open up a little bit more, but, uh, yeah, a lot of the fun things are still locked down, sadly. Uh, then we go to this month's June. Oh, I missed a spot right there. I'm gonna have to go back around and spray that. But yeah, then we go to June. This was probably the worst month of this whole event that we're going through. For me, it was. And it's kind of hard for me to say it, but, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and say it anyway. So, it was around the beginning of June where I was just... I honestly was falling apart. It might have been cabin fever. Because, you know, we were all locked indoors because of the stupid coronavirus. I have to keep emphasizing on that, but can't be helped. Um, there was this guy on YouTube who has been harassing people for nine years. Yeah, nine. Since, like, May of 2011 till back in March. I don't know if he's still lurking around YouTube, but if he is, then he's got, he has some serious issues. He, he's been harassing people for too long. So this guy's name is Perp Ellie Gogo. Don't ask what that means, because I have no idea what the heck that's supposed to mean. It's purple without the L, and then Ellie Gogo. I don't, I don't even know what the hell that's supposed to mean. But anyway, this guy was somebody who was basically, I thought would be a troll. I thought he was just trolling, and it'll end, you know, eventually. But um, no, this guy, I stopped considering him a troll. I started to consider him more of a cyber bully. Because he has caused me a lot of pain back in the early 2010s. I mean, this is... Remember when I said 2011 was such a bad year? And same with 2012. This is why. He attacked me in 2011 and 12. That was, like, his worst. And then 2013, he didn't really... He wasn't really around 2013 or 14. 2015... Around September, I think, he came back for a little bit, and then he, like, got me framed as this one guy in impersonating Leroy. There's one of those Pokemon tubers out there. Um, then he attacked me back in December 2015 till, like, the summer 2016. I think that was the last of them. Well, or so I thought. Then he came... Then around the summer 2017, he came back, and he uploaded, like, two videos. I didn't even know this until I was informed last year in March by one of my friends that he was still around. I thought, oh, he, he's moved on. He, he's not, he, he's got bored of us, but no, he, he started to attack us again back in August last year. And yeah, it went on till like March of this year because I, th I think my friend said he was going to like, you know, report him to the YouTube staff. Um, I think he hasn't, he hasn't really came back since then, but in the beginning of June, the aftermath of his rampage pretty much was making me fall apart. And it was bad. I, like, I needed a friend. And thankfully I did have someone. There was somebody I've been talking to since last year, in April. Well, I was her friend since like 2016, but I wasn't talking to her as much until last year. Because I didn't want to lose her or anything. I wanted to still be her friend. So I started to talk to her more, and I felt better. I especially feel better now, because Jessit Radio's 20th anniversary. Oh, and I got a jet ranking for uh, Kogane Cho's 
jet technique. Now we're gonna go to Benten Show and play as Beat. Yeah, we swap with Beat and Mew, and like I said before. Oh! We got, uh. Recipe for the Perfect Afro playing. This is a song that would have played in Tag or Die, which is the Bantam Street level. But we got the, the new metal music instead, which was uh, Dragula, Slow, and uh, Just Got Wicked. And I remember talking about Just Got Wicked, um, the, the band Cold that made the song, Just Got Wicked, and how I like Cold. And that I liked the songs, uh, what do you call it? Send in the Clowns and Confession. Like, Send in the Clowns, Confession, and Just Got Wicked are probably my top three favorite songs from Cold. They're really great songs. They're, they've made probably, in my opinion, I think they made some of the best new metal songs. Yeah, th this was in the European version of Jet Set Radio. You know, if you were playing Jet Grind Radio, which is the American version, just a radio on, on the Dreamcast, you would have just got the new metal songs. You wouldn't have got this. Europe got this. Right along with Many Styles and Funky Plucker. And Many Styles did not come to the HD re release. I really wish it did. But it was only in the European version. I think it's also in Daylight Jet Set Radio as well, which is the, the second version of the Japanese Jet Set Radio. And then the original Japanese Jet Set Radio had Dunny Boy Williamson Show, which never came to any version outside of that one. I w wish it did. Sadly, it has not. I'd like to... Like I said, I want to play the Japanese Jet Set Not Daylight Jet Set Radio, I've actually played that, but I want to play the original Je Jet Set Japanese Jet Set Radio. Uh, I get to see Cube's original design. I think it was a lot cooler, where she wore like a gray shirt and black long sleeve shirt underneath it. I think that was a lot better, in my opinion. I've been starting to really like Cube a lot over the years. She's a really cool looking character, and she's like gothic too. I th and goth is really cool, in my opinion. So... Yeah, and then back to the soundtrack, I really wish Yappy Feet would come would have come back to the HD version, but unfortunately that did not. It's only in the Dreamcast version. Well, anyway, back to my quarantine story. So I was talking about, um, you know, I wasn't doing so well dur during the aftermath of my longtime cyber bullies rampage, Purpley Go Go. I did some things to cheer myself up. There was a band I've been listening to, or there's other bands I was listening to. There was My Chemical Romance, Black Veil Brides, Paramore, Fall Out Boy, and then one well, my favorite band, Escape the Fate. I think they've made some of the best rock songs out there. I think their uh, one album, Dying Is Your Latest Fashion, is a masterpiece. There's so many great songs in that album. Can't even decide which one's my favorite. I like the webs we weave, situations. There's no sympathy for the dead. The reverse this curse, the guillotine, friends and alibis. All those songs are great. But yeah, I mostly did listen to situations though. Yeah, that, that, that was a song I've listened to a lot during the quarantine. It's like, I cannot get enough of that song. It's so good. Yeah, this is how much I really like Escape the Fate. I mean, that wasn't the only song I listened to. It was all the other ones I, that I've named and listened to. The, the entire album in general. And here I am now, playing Jet Set Radio. I don't think there's really anything else worth mentioning about this coronavirus lockdown that's been going on for kind of a long time now. I hope we can get a cure for this coronavirus soon enough. And hopefully 2021 will be a great year. I just hope. But hopefully we don't jinx it. And then not get a cure for next year. Then have to wait to 2022. Hopefully we can get it sooner than that. We can only hope. 
So anyway, that's the end of the Corona, the the lock, the the quarantine story of mine. And you know, a lot of people's uh, experiences through the, cor the quarantine was basically, you know, they want to do stuff, but they they're locked in. But you know, a lot of gamers are like, yeah, we get to stay home, play video games all day, and. You know, anime fans. I get to watch anime all day. You know, there's me who likes both. Yeah. Now I got to work on my game more and more. I'm making a game, and I got to you know work on that more during this event. So yeah, I definitely had a lot more time for like all my hobbies and whatnot than before the quarantine. So that's probably the only thing I liked about it. But outside of that, you know, I, I, I was getting bored of it. So that's why I hope we can get out of this. I mean, like I said, things are starting to open up again, but just some places, not everything. And yeah, a lot of people's experiences through the quarantines, well, a lot of people's hair has been growing out really long, so, like, People were giving themselves haircuts because they need a haircut, but all the barber shops and all the salons are closed, and so they have to give themselves haircuts. Either that, or they just keep their long hair. My hair was already kind of long during the before the quarantine, and it was getting like really long. Although I usually don't mind. I like to have long hair, but I still like to get it cut, but. When I get it cut, I want it to be, like, styled, and I still want it to be, you know, long enough to still look cool and whatnot. So, yeah, I, I was always more of a long hair person. I'll be honest, I despise short hair, at least on me. I mean, if you guys like short hair and you think you look great in short hair, kudos to you. But for me, I don't know, I just, I don't like short hair. I, I think I look really ugh, in short hair. I prefer long hair. I look a lot cooler with long hair. Um, you know, I, you know I, my, some of my family members tell me, oh, you should have short hair, you'll look nice, but I'm just like, I would prefer to look cool. And styling it is like the best part. I like to have the long type of hair to work and style it. I like to give it like spiky, rock star type of hair. Admittedly, I like to go to like the emo hair too. I think it looks pretty cool on me. Yeah, I just like to style my hair. It's it's great. That's why I prefer long hair. You know. But yeah, that's just me. I'm more of a long hair person, and never a short hair person. So yeah, that's not much else to say. We're almost done with the. Uh, Jet technique. We have about a minute and a half, 90 seconds. We're just gonna be grinding around this section, really, and then after the amount of time that we have left is over, we'll be going on to the grind city stages. Nice. Nice. So yeah, we'll just keep doing that. Oh, I see. There's like two of those buses, those pink buses. One of the buses I used to get the graffiti soul in the boss battle against the noise tanks. The graffiti soul is around this area right here. I had to jump down to the bus to get it. It was right around this area that I'm in right now. See, so yeah, we're almost done. We got 40 seconds left. I'm trying to think what else I could talk about, but there are some things I want to talk about, but I want to save it for Grind City. I don't want to like get interrupted by the results screen and be like, oh, look, I got a jet rank and you know all that. Now we got 23 seconds. And dropping. 20 seconds next. It's a good thing we got to hear recipe for the perfect afro. Yeah, like I said, it would have played in the in the Bantam Streets, but we got the new metal songs instead. Which, I don't mind, I actually liked the new metal songs, too, so... Like, I mentioned how I liked Cold. And there we go, that takes care of Ben Tencho. And we got a Jet Ranking. 
All right, now we're going to be going to Grind City, starting with the Bantam Street, taking on the Jet Technique there, playing as Mew. Let's see what song we get this time. About the City by Reps, an underground band. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, jump up here. And we get the chicken soup cans. Yeah, I remember mentioning about uh, mentioning chicken noodle soup and, and then chicken ramen. Yeah, I need to have some ramen noodles again. I remember how good they were. I remember eating them a lot. I started eating them back in like 2014. I remember how good they were. The first time I ate them, I was like, this is some good stuff. I love ramen noodles. Oh yeah, and the trains still come here too, by the way. And I missed that billboard right there. I should get go back and get it. And there's another train on the other side. So I was talking about noodles and... Um... Oh yeah, there's the... the the noodles in that uh, Super Smash Bros. Ultimate Min Min Reveal trailer. I watched that and I was like craving for the noodles they were having. Captain Falcon was just slurping on those noodles. And, oh my gosh, that was very, that must have been very tasty. I want to have whatever those noodles were. Yeah, I'm glad Min Min joined Smash Bros. as well. I mean, coming from somebody who doesn't even play ARMS, and I, I actually do like Min Min. She's pretty cool. It had to be Min Min because Spring Man is already an assist trophy. Maybe in the next Super Smash Brothers, if there's going to be another Super, Super Smash Brothers, they'll have Spring Man. But yeah, Spring Man, I, I remember when they first revealed ARMS when they were giving more information on the Switch. Um, they uh, named the character Spring Man. I was like, there's a Spring Man in Mega Man 7. <laughs> I knew there was going to be like some crossover art between Spring Man from ARMS and Mega Man 7. Pretty sure there is, but I didn't bother switching them up yet. I'll probably do that afterwards. Surely there's gotta be some. So, you know, I, I, there were some things I wanted to say, but I was running out of time in the in Benton show and I didn't want to get interrupted by the results screen. Um, you know, Sega was, you know, they're, they're recently have been re reviving some old franchises that they've been just, you know, sitting on. Sega, Sega has been sitting on a lot of IPs and pretty much do, do nothing with them, but or at least that's what it was back then. Now it seems like they're trying to bring them back, but we still need Jet Set Radio back. They have been bringing some back, like, uh, let's see, there was a poll that was hosted and then the Jet Set Radio was ranked number two. And it was only beaten by Soccer Wars, and I was like, ugh, we were all sad. You know, Soccer Wars won, and I'll be honest, I was gonna hate Soccer Wars for the crime of it beating Jet Set Radio in that poll. But you know, then I was like, you know, that's not a very good idea. It's, that's definitely not a good reason to hate a game. Although, you know, looking at it, uh, might not really, you know, be in my taste, but wouldn't say I. I'm gonna hate the game. I'm not gonna hate it. But yeah, I was still just like, oh man, I wanted Jet Set Radio to win that one. But then they made another poll of what should be brought to the Nintendo Switch via Sega Ages, which is basically re-releases of old Sega games. They've recently been releasing Master System games, Genesis games, and arcade games via Sega Ages. And Master System games, you know, I'm glad we got those. You know, it's Master System games usually never really get their chance to shine. They're always overshadowed by the Genesis games. And Genesis games, I mean, well, we have Sega Genesis classics. Though I really wish it had Sonic 3 Knuckles on it. We got that, and I was like, I don't know if I want to get any of the games from the Sega Ages line on the Genesis side. The arcade side, on the other hand, they got some great things to offer. I just wish they would release Saturn and Dreamcast games. They said they were going to try their best for Saturn and Dreamcast. And they made, so anyway, they made a poll on what should be brought to the Nintendo Switch via Sega Ages, and Jet Set Radio was ranked number one. And that was great. 
to hear that it ranked number one. However, they did say, uh, we're not so sure about this. We'll try our best. I don't know, it just seems like, you know, if it's Jet Set Radio, Sega is just going to be, like, giving it the cold sh shoulder. You know, I I've been saying it for a while now. That I always say that Jet Set Radio is the F-Zero of Sega franchises. Because it seems like Sega just doesn't want to bring it back sometimes. Like, at least that's what it, it seems like so far. They'll do merchandise. They did do merchandise of Jet Set Radio stuff after that poll. I got the sunglasses. And then they also made, like, the shirts, jacket, and all that stuff. It was pretty cool. And all of a sudden, we started seeing more Sega franchises coming back as, like, their games getting ported, or they're getting a new entry into their series or whatnot. Uh, we did get a new Toe Jam and Earl game. And then we also got a... The, the announcement of a, of a Panda Dragoon remake, which came out a few months ago. Uh, Super Monkey Ball Banana Blitz HD came out. Um, and then there is an Alex Kid remake coming out. And, you know, everyone's like, yeah, Sega's back on track. But for me, I'm just like, that's great and all, but I get a little hurt inside because it's not Jet Set Radio that they're bringing back. You know, but I don't know. At the same time, this could mean that Jet Set Radio is getting closer to coming back. Maybe they're just starting with all this other stuff, and then eventually they'll do Jet Set Radio. They've got to! I bet Sega knows how much we want a new Jet Set Radio at this point. It's like, every time I hear the words Jet Set Radio from Sega, I just, I'm like, I'm like, oh, I, I, you, you caught my attention. I need to hear whatever they need to say. Usually only to be disappointed. I mean, look what they did with uh, that Jet Set Radio for the Wii. Yeah, there was going to be a Jet Set Radio for the Wii. You know how awesome that would have been? I could have imagined if it actually happened. You could use the Wii Remote as a spray can. That would have been great, but... No, Sega decided not to have it happen. They were just like, We're not interested in making a new Jet Set Radio for any console. And then, years have passed, and then... There was another Jet Set Radio by Dinosaur Games, which... Um... That one felt more like a 3D animation than an actual game, and that was also rejected by Sega for unstated reasons. Admittedly, I wasn't too disappointed, because... There was no gameplay. It, was, it just looked like some 3D model animation, and... It didn't even have that, you know, comic book art style that Jet Set Radio had. It, it just felt very soulless without it. You know? I still would like a new Jet Set Radio. At least, maybe give us a port of Jet Set Radio Future. That would have been great. But, you know, either a port of Jet Set Radio Future. Some people want a port. There's some other people who want it to come to the Xbox backwards compatibility thing. Um, it didn't come to the Xbox One's backwards compatibility list, unfortunately. Maybe for this Xbox Series X it will, but... We'll just have to wait and see what happens if they ever do something with the series, and I really hope that they do. I'm just hoping that it's the next Sega franchise to be revived. I mean, there's other Sega franchises that people want to get revived, like Nights into Dreams. Some people want Restar to come back. And then there's others like that only had one game, like, like, like Restar, and then there's Skies of Arcadia. And then there was a... Uh, Oh, there's another Sega franchise I would like to come back. First, I want Jet Set Radio back, but after Jet Set Radio, I would like Gunstar Heroes to come back. I played that on the Genesis, and that's actually really fun. So, yeah. I'm just hoping for that one day to come, if it ever is gonna come, where Jet Set Radio comes back. Gets a port, gets a new game, like... I just want something. I want something Jet Set Radio related soon enough. So we only got eight seconds left in the jet technique of Phantom Street. Three, two, one, and we're done. And I ran to that trash can. <laughs> and I got a jet rank. 
Alright, so we only got one more stage, and that's Grind Square. And then after that, we're done with the jet techniques. And then we gotta do the jet crushes after that. So we'll be playing as Beat. Three, two, one, and once go! again, we get Mischievous Boy playing as the song. We, we had that like two times in a row when we started doing the jet, uh, not jet crush, jet techniques. Yeah, it's playing again. I don't mind though, it's a good song. We still got that Golden Rhino statue right there. So, yeah, I don't really know much else to talk about. I mean, I already went over the coronavirus lockdown story of mine. We talked about Sega franchises coming back, and sadly Jet Set Radio isn't one of them so far. I would like it to come back soon enough, but... Oh, actually, uh, Sega is hosting a survey right now. Uh, they're basically asking what people want, and, uh, you know, I'm voting for Jet Set Radio to come back. Uh, I filled out the survey, and hope, hoping that Jet Set Radio is the franchise that's going to come back next. I just hope. Well, anyway, we're going to the streets to spray all of this, and I'm spinning around while I'm doing it so I can rack up on some points. Like I said, I want to go through all the green arrows and spray them too. So I'm going to be perfectly honest, I don't really know much else to talk about. I feel like I've talked about just about everything I wanted to talk about. So I guess I could revisit certain subjects, like how terrible 2020 is, and comparing it to other years, even the bad ones, makes it feel like great years. I know years, like I said, I, like I, I know years aren't gods, but still. I hate 2020, just like everybody else. I mean, I wasn't even a fan of the previous decade. I don't think a lot of people were. A lot of people I know just hated the 2010s. I miss the 2000s the most, especially 2006, 7, and 8. Especially 2007. That was my favorite year. That was like the best year of my life. If I could live it all over again, I would do it easily. They Times were a lot simpler, and I had the most fun. I wish I could go back to that year. If it was three years I could go back to, it would be 2006, 7, and 8. Great times. Great times indeed. Simpler times. Fun times. Then we go to 2009, and the first half of it was pretty bad. I suffered a lot, but then the other half was actually surprisingly very good outweighed all the bad things about 2009, which was the first half of it. Yeah, I, was, I mean, I just, you know, I started middle school in 2008, and it started off pretty good, but then the other half got kind of bad. My teachers were pretty bad. I, mean, I had a fat, ugly teacher who sucked. Yeah, I've, I've talked a little bit about it in my Earthbound Beginnings playthrough. My school is full of bullies. But then seventh grade was actually really good, which made the other half of 2009 awesome. And then 2010 was surprisingly very fun. While I wouldn't say it was as great as 2007, I thought that was going to be the last good year, because then 2011 happened. I hated it. Like I said, Purpley Go Go came in and pretty much ruined everything. Same with 2012. It was basically a copy and paste of 2011 again. <sighs> you know, Perp was still there. And 2013 it was still bad till around the holidays. You know, around Christmas times when things got started to become better again. And then 2014 was a pretty good year, admittedly. I mean, it could have been better, but I would say overall it was a really good year. I remember making some really good friends on Steam. Well. One of them is still a really good friend. A few of the others, she kind of just, you know, we parted ways. And one of them turned out to be a jerk. Oh my gosh, he sucked. Like, he was a psychopath. We had to... Uh, we had to keep reporting him. Details aren't really important, but... You know, he, he's out of our hair, thankfully. 2015, uh, I had some struggles. And, uh... Well, I mean, there were some fun things about that year, but... 
I definitely had some struggles that year too. And in 2016, everybody hated it, but for me personally, it was like 2009. Like the first half was bad and the other half was good. Except, you know, 2016 did have a lot of bad things, but for, for my personal experience, it was like the other half was good, but at the same time it felt very quiet and just calm and not much else was going on. Not a bad thing. Sometimes I like to have some peace and quiet, but... You know, I I want some exciting things to happen, which 2017 was great for me. I, I liked 2017 a lot. I didn't think I would have a amazingly great year like 2017. Like, 2017, the Nintendo Switch came out, and then Mario Kart 8 Deluxe was released on my birthday, April 28th, 2020, not 2020, 2017. That was great. And then, uh, May of 2017, uh, Anime Central for the second time, and then I got to go to Japan! Yeah, that's right, I got to go to Japan. I think I've mentioned this before, I went to Tokyo, I even went to Shibuya, and I went to the bus terminal, where, you know, Jet Set Radio takes place, that, that little bus terminal, and it did look very much like I was... In Jet Set Radio, I saw the there was a bus terminal. So there was actually some construction going on, like further back, but it did look very much the same. I was like, "Hey, I know this place. I was here in Jet Set Radio." I went to that. I went to Park Street. Although I don't, I don't think I saw a park. If, I don't know. I, I don't remember if I did or not. But yeah, I remember there were some places. I went to where Dogenzaka Hill was, you know, Jets at Radio Future. I went to where that place was. That was great. Yeah, there was a lot of places that looked very uh, familiar because I played Jets at Radio. I definitely would like to go back to Japan one day. I'm hoping, like, maybe 2022. But, yeah, we'll see what happens. And the rest of that year, uh, well, I just had a lot of fun. Hung out with my friend who's helping me make this game that we're making. Yeah, I'm making a game. I I think I mentioned it a little bit before. Um, yeah, this game, I, I'm still working on it, and... Yeah, it's... It's gonna come out one day, hopefully, sooner. Like, I, I still got some things to iron out, but... I think I got the whole story confirmed. All the bosses and the whole gameplay idea that I've got. I think I got all that settled down. I think I got that all planned out. And have it all executed pretty well. And then, uh, 2018 was also a pretty good year. I mean, I had some struggles, but, um, all the great and fun things that happened that year outweighed all the bad things. And at the end, I got to go to Jamaica, which was great. And then 2019, you know, I've mentioned some things that happened in 2019. I remember at the at the beginning of the year being afraid of that one song, the Null Desert, that was used in the video Hotel Mario 13 Hotel. Kept me sleep deprived, and I had to go to sleep. But, you know, I was kind of afraid, so I just listened to the Jet Set Radio Future soundtrack while I sleep. I know it's very upbeat and, you know, more hardcore. To, it's gonna be hard to sleep to that, but I had to do it. But then I had some fun things happen. Like, uh, I went to Florida to sail on a boat to go to uh, the Cayman Islands and Cuba. Cuba, when it was legal to sail there. Not anymore, though. I got to see Pokemon Detective Pikachu, um, Anime Central in 2019. Which didn't happen this year because of the coronavirus. I remember listening to Fall Out Boy again last year. Listened to Dance Dance by Fall Out Boy. I started getting into competitive Smash Bros. It was around the time when Smash Bros. Ultimate came out. I got to play the piano during my cousin's wedding. And yeah, 2019 was a overall pretty good year for the most part. There were some struggles here and there, but... I know Purple and Google came back, but it was still a great year, unlike this one. Hopefully 2021 does great. We just have to wait and see. 
And we got a jet ranking. That takes care of all the jet techniques. See you in Jet Crush.